Well, good morning, Sherwood family and friends, those that are here in person and those that are watching online on Facebook and YouTube. My name is Pastor Brad. Good morning. How are you this morning, church? All right, all right. It looks like we got some vacationers that have flocked to other places this morning, but we also have some people visiting with us, and so I uh, want to give a big shout out and a good morning to the Barbers. How are you, Barber family? Nice to see you this morning. So glad that you're here. We are going to go through a few announcements very quickly, and then we're going to get right into the service. So as you know, you can find us live every Sunday morning on Facebook and YouTube. If you can't be here at 10 a.m., if you are there, make sure that you do click the like, subscribe, all those things so that you always know when we're live and put media up there. Uh, we do want to welcome new guests, and the way that we do that is we have connection cards that you can fill out when you come in or online, just so we get to know who you are and all that, and we can connect with you. We do use an app during the service called the Church Center app. It's just a way for us to communicate back and forth as the service is progressing. And so uh, you can download that. It's free. And we use that as we're looking at Scripture as well. So it's a great app to have with you. And you can always stay connected with what's going on here at the church midweek. Pastor Annette, where are you at? Pastor Annette, hello. Pastor Annette's going to be online with us today in chat and is also sharing in the morning. But she also does the Sherwood Times, which just lets you know what's happening here throughout the week. And she's done one for the entire summer so that you can find out when vacations are for pastors and what's happening throughout the summer. And we're going to be continuing our series for the summer in stories Jesus told. Can anyone tell me what that is called? There's a one word for stories that Jesus told. Parables. Fantastic. Today we're going to be talking about the parable of the sower from Matthew 13. Just looking forward to sharing that with you together. And we do always as, uh, want to thank you for your continued faithfulness in giving a tithes and offerings. You know there's a few ways that you can do that. You can do it online. If you've got a mobile device or a computer, you can do that. You can give in person. There's a box at the back as you came in and as you exit. Or you can e-transfer the church. And the email for that is office at naspei.com. And now, would you give a big round of applause? for our sound man, member of the board, and the gentleman joining me for the icebreaker this morning, Rob Harding. I had to fight my way through the crowd. Good. Is your wife here? Where's she at? Uh-oh. This is uncomfortable. Well, good morning, Rob. How are you this morning? I'm great. How are you doing? Fine, thanks. Rob, you're one of the newest members of the board here. Congratulations. Thanks. And what a blessing that's been. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Yeah. Rob came into the board sweeping reforms all over in all areas. He just came in, put the hammer down. We're going to enjoy your time with us on the board, aren't we, Rob? I'm not, I'm not falling for your Jedi mind tricks. I'm not. <laughs> I'm not yes, trying to, I'll listen, I'm not trying to trap you. We're going to have a great time, for sure. So, Rob, every, every week I have the opportunity when I'm here in the evenings, I go out for walks around the community, and there's this home on the corner, and I've been watching them, uh, this is going to sound creepy from afar, uh, as they've been like planting gardens and tending their yard and all this kind of stuff. And, I, and I've been watching for weeks and weeks and weeks. And recently, uh, actually last week, I walked by their house and they had a little stand out with all this like fresh fruit and all that. And I've been watching them care for their garden as I've been going by in the evenings and the fruit that's been produced, they're putting out and they're selling now. And it got me thinking specifically with the smorp that we're going to be talking about, the parable of the sowers later, it made me think about gardening. I'm not a big gardener. I grew up on a farm, a potato farm. And I tried to get as far away from that as possible. So I don't do a lot of gardening. But I'm curious about you, sir, and any of you as well, and those online. Because our icebreaker is, if you could grow any fruit or vegetable, what would it be? And why, Rob? Well, no, I do not grow a garden. I wish I could. I just don't. Well, you were the wrong person to pick for this icebreaker. <laughs> it's just... I'm one of those types of people who would like things, if I planted a seed yesterday, I would like it the day before. Uh, so, uh, so the patience piece is missing. Yeah, it's gone. Yeah. Gone. Yeah, if you, oh. if you could pray, that, that'd that be fantastic. Um, but if I did plant a garden, I uh, would definitely, and I think you used the word wrong, I think the word is vegetables. Vegetables? Yeah. I would probably Sorry. plant vegetables and not fruit. Um, Although tomatoes, I think there's a, there's a battle out there whether or not a tomato is a fruit or a vegetable. Oh, man. And uh, I'm going for today, call it a vegetable. But that's, it, you know that's all anyone's going to remember when service is done. Mission accomplished. Um, 
but it would be a tomato. Um, I, I really do love tomatoes. Uh, apparently, they're easy to grow. Um, you can eat them with anything. Tomato sandwich, tomato fish kebabs, go. tomato, whatever. Everybody buckle in. He's going to list all the things <laughs> anyway, you can have with tomatoes. Tomatoes are just my favorite vegetable. Uh, it's funny because that's mine as well. I was thinking strawberries. We go through a lot of strawberries in the house. But I have this memory as a child sitting on my grandfather's step, and he would go to the garden and pull out a tomato and, you know, cut it and put some salt on it, and he and I would share a tomato together. So there's a part of me that just because of nostalgia would want to grow tomatoes. I think they are easy to grow. Uh, I'm seeing some people are saying here, Melody Cider saying garlic. Ugh, gross. That's fine. Ward off those vampires. Um, Kelsey Murray, pineapple. Can you? Can we grow pineapple here? That, that I'm gonna. Ig- okay, so changing climate uh, and then growing that. Uh, Lynn McMillan, she's saying tomatoes because they taste good and she loves making bruschetta. All right, all right. Dawn is saying she has a huge garden, but she misses the BC peaches. We can't grow them here. So if you could, you would grow peaches. Uh, here. All right, all right. Let's just take a quick peek if anyone on Facebook is responding. Tomatoes, cucumbers, but they're not much of a garden. That's coming from Mary Ellen. Uh, All right, all right. Well, we're going to invite Pastor Annette to come. And Rob, good luck to you, sir, with... uh, I don't don't know how to end this with you. Just remember, if you didn't get anything from today, you've learned a new word, and it's vegetables. Vegetables. Fantastic. Vegetable soup. (laughs) Oh, Pastor Annette, thank you. <laughs> thank you. I, I don't know how to follow along. up with that. <laughs> well, good morning, everyone, and welcome to Sherwood. Welcome to coming in in person. It's so nice to look out and see you have all these beautiful, smiley faces this morning. So welcome to me- being here this morning with us. Um, and for our church online, thank you for joining us. Um, so excited that you are joining us, joining us each and every week. Um, It is great to see all the number of people online. Um, Feel free to to, uh, drop some hellos in the chat and later on when we go into SMORP. SMORP, Enjoy the uh, time that we have there on our chat. I will be doing that as well as I come back up and join us with uh, uh, the SMORP later on with Pastor Brad. This morning our call to worship comes out of Romans 12 verses 1 to 2. There we go. (laughs) And so, dear brothers and sisters, I plead with you to give your bodies to God because of all he has done for you. Let them be a living and holy sacrifice, the kind he will find acceptable. This is truly the way to worship him. Don't copy the behavior and the customs of this world, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. Then you will learn to know God's will for you which is good and pleasing and perfect. Please stand this morning as we do our daily declaration together. So all together now. Today, I choose to abide in Christ. I will remain connected to him by engaging in his word, listening to his voice, obeying his commands, and loving one another. My desire is to bear much fruit for his glory. This might be a new song to some of you. And you're welcome to stand or sit as we worship this morning. Sing, breathe on me. Breathe on me, breath of God. Breathe on me. Breathe on me, breath of God. Breathe on me. I come alive, I'm alive when you breathe on me. And I come alive, I'm alive when you breathe on me. Sing, awake my soul. Awake, awake, awake my soul. God resurrect these bones from death to life for you. Sing, speak to me, word of God. 
Speak to me, word of God, speak to me. Speak to me, word of God, speak to me. I come alive. And I come alive, I'm alive when you speak to me. I'm alive, I'm alive when you speak to me. Awake, awake, awake my soul. God, resurrect these bones from death to life for you. Sing that chorus one last time. Awake, awake, awake my soul. God resurrect these bones from death to life for you. It is so sweet to trust in Jesus, just to take him at his word, just to rest upon his promise, just to know that say the Lord, Jesus, Jesus, how I trust him and how I proved him over and over. And Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, oh, for grace to trust him more. Oh, how sweet to trust. And oh, how sweet to trust in Jesus, just to trust his cleansing blood, and just in simple faith to plunge me neath the healing cleansing blood. Oh, Jesus, Jesus, how I trust him and how I proved him more and more. And Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, oh, for grace to trust him more. Yes, tis sweet to trust. Yes, tis sweet to trust in Jesus, just from sin and self to cease. And just from Jesus simply taking life and rest and joy and peace. Jesus, Jesus, how I trust him and how I proved him over and over. Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, oh, for grace to trust him more. I'm so glad I learned to trust thee. And I'm so glad I learned to trust the precious Jesus, Savior, friend. And, and I know that thou art with me, wilt be with me to the end. Jesus, Jesus, how I trust him and how I 
have proved him or endure. Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, oh, for grace to trust him more. And Jesus, Jesus, how I've trusted, how I've proved him or endure. Precious Jesus, oh, for grace to trust Him more. Amen. You may be seated. The only thing missing this morning was a campfire, Pastor Annette. Campfire? Put, we could have put a little camp. Oh, someone put, put a, a candle, candle there. <laughs> Are you kidding me? That was you, wasn't it? Could have, could have been. Well, now, good. now I have a craving for s'mores. Oh my! And goodness. spider dogs. What's a spider dog? What? Hold on. We, we, there's other things to talk. Did I offend <laughs> half the congregation? You take a hot dog, and on the ends you cut it, and then you rotate it, and you cut it but not all the way through, just part way. Then you put it on a stick and you put it over the fire and the ends go ee, like a spider and then you eat it. It's delicious. Just say it. <laughs> I have no idea what's going on here this morning. <laughs> well, Pastor Annette, we Pastor are going to continue in the series of stories Jesus told. Are you excited? Well, I'm very excited about this one. Before we get into it, though, yes. as is our custom, yes. we, as you know, are sponsored by McDonald's. <laughs> and so it is the, this is the section of the service where we promote McDonald's and say, mmm, um, I'm loving it. Mm. And, and that's how we get their money. <laughs> but we do have our memory verse from last week. It was short, it was simple, and if you are able to get it this morning, we do have a $5 gift card that you can take to McDonald's. And there's so many McDonald's around Charlottetown. Aren't they the best? And Georgina's not here this morning, Georgina's so other people have here. a chance. So they have a chance. <laughs> so online, you're welcome to participate as well, and we can send you something if you get it first. Yes. But I'm curious if there's someone here this morning in the house that remembers the memory verse from last week. D don't laugh at me. What? <laughs> Come on. Yes. Thank you. Dr. Mike, would you stand and repeat that, please? Are you looking at your phone? He is. No. <laughs> I mean, that's... Your daughter Faith just sold you out. <laughs> just memorized it just now, eh? Wow. <laughs> well, yeah, he's got it. Let's, let's give him a big round of applause. Congratulations. And don't forget to use code uh, Sherwood when you use that. You get 10% off at McDonald's. No, it's not no. right. Don't, don't try that. <laughs> but it'd be fun to watch you try. <laughs> it would be fun to watch you try. Uh, well, we are going to look this morning into the parable of the soils, Pastor Annette. Yes. And so we're going to have it on the screen in just a second. But before we do that, last week we started a new series, as we've mentioned before. And it's all about the parables. Throughout the course of the summer, we're going to be looking at the stories that Jesus told, which are called parables. And he told us these, they're stories uh, that teach us important lessons about the kingdom of heaven. If you remember that last week, one of the big things that came away, that we came away with was the sense that we need to listen. Yes. Uh, that those that are willing to listen will understand what he's talking about in terms of the kingdom of heaven. And so today we're looking in Matthew 13. And before we get there, I'm going to set the scene a little bit. Jesus has been on the scene now for some time and he's gaining notoriety people know who he is and when he goes out crowds gather just like when matt barber matthew barber goes out and about the town crowds gather isn't that right matthew maybe not for the same reasons but but the crowds gathering around jesus and he spent a lot of his time i actually went back and looked at a lot of what he'd been saying beforehand and he was spending a lot of his time dealing with people's expectations of who they thought he was, what they thought he should be doing, and what the kingdom of heaven was supposed to look like. And a lot of what Jesus is saying up until this point is, 
He's saying, well, actually, I say this, and actually, it's like this. So he's spending a lot of time kind of working things out, and he's, he's also healing, and he's casting out demons. And so now we find Jesus, and a crowd is gathering around him to hear from him. And so to be able to teach them, he actually goes out on a boat. And so that you can imagine the crowds on the shore. Jesus is out on a boat, and he turns to them, and he begins to teach. And we're going to go through that story right now. And so it'll be on the screen. Pastor Annette. Would you like to read it this morning? Sure. Thank you. Be a pleasure. So Matthew 13, starting at verse 3. He told many stories in the form of parables, such as this one. Listen. A farmer went out to plant some seeds. As he scattered them across the field, some seeds fell on a footpath, and the birds came and ate them. Other seeds fell on shallow soil and underlying rock. The seeds sprouted quickly because the soil was shallow. The plants soon wilted under the hot sun, and since they didn't have deep roots, they died. The other seeds fell among thorns and grew up and choked out the tender plants. Still other seeds fell on fertile soil, and they produced a crop that was 30, 60, and even 100 times as much as it had been planted. Anyone with ears to hear should listen and understand. Praise be to God. The word of the Lord, praise mm. be to God. Amen. Yes. So, Pastor Annette, we're going to yes. go through the tool that we use here, which is called SMORP. And I know for most of us, you all know what that is. But maybe if you've never heard about it, if you're watching for the first time, SMORP is just a simple, weird word, but it's an acronym that stands for Scripture, Message, Obedience, Repentance, and Prayer. And it's just, it's a way that we look at Scripture and go through some very guided questions, and it's an opportunity for all of us to participate together. The whole purpose of this is not so that we can just say what we think to everybody, but so that we together can look at the Word, and those that are online as well mm -hmm. can participate. And so we begin with the S of our SMORP, which is Scripture, and that that is what words or phrases or observations stood out to you as you read this passage. And so if you do have the Church Center app that I referenced, you can drop it in there, as you know, or if you're online, put it in the chat. And between Pastor Annette and myself, we'll try to get those. But I'm going to flip things to you, Pastor Annette. Of course. What, what stood out to you in this passage? Well, there's a couple things that stood out. The word listen appeared twice, once at the very beginning and then once at the end. Um, the words scat the word scattered to mm. plant but the word fell appeared four times mm. so those words really stood out the phrase um, ears to hear should listen and understand that whole phrase yep. was was um pivotal to me but those words really stood out to me I also highlighted a lot of what you just said. The word listen, like you said, mm -hmm. appeared at the beginning and at the end. The word seeds was in there mm -hmm. a lot. Yes. So that was something that I that jumped out. You know, there's four types of soil that are mentioned here. Really? And then there's four reactions uh, from the seed that, you know, lands in that soil. Uh, the birds came and ate, sprouting quickly with no roots. The withered and died, choked out, and then produced and multiplied. But I... One word that really jumped out at me, and it was at that, that end phrase that you just said, anyone with ears to hear, let them hear. The, the word anyone yes. really is open to all that would be willing to listen. And so to me, that was really important. And even in this parable, that we'll, we'll get into it, that whole sense. But Pastor Brad, it's about listening and understanding. Ooh. When we listen, when we take the time to listen, we'll understand. So are you saying that it's possible for me to listen and still not understand? Let me give you a quick example. I still don't know what a spider dog is. <laughs> Couldn't well, tell you. Heard her words. I thought she made a, a hot dog cinnamon bun is what I pictured. Anybody got a hot dog out there? Like, I can show them right now. My, 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 deep, my deep theological point is this. Yes. It's, it's possible to listen and still not understand. So you'll have to show me later, I guess. Yes. All right. So I, the other, one last thing was, that jumped out was that he told many stories in the form of parables. And I often think not everything that Jesus did is recorded in the Bible. There are things that he did yes. that we don't see and all that. It makes me wonder what other stories. That's just, that was just for me. I thought, man, I wonder how many times he just sat down around the campfire with his friends and told stories to help them understand the kingdom better. So... 
One of the big things that we love to do uh, as we look at this is to see the nature and the work of God. What is God's character like? What can we learn about him in this passage? Well, for me, there's a couple things that kind of stood out. So, Pastor Brad, you're a parent. I am. I'm a parent also. And, and I'm a grandma as well. We, as parents, our, our role is to make sure that our kids don't enter into dangerous or harmful situations, right? We want to do everything we can. We want to give them opportunities to, to fail, but we don't want them in harm's way in any way, shape, or form. And our Heavenly Father is also like that, mm -hmm. okay? And I see that in and through this, this scripture. The thing that he does that I really like, when my kids were little, I don't know about you, but when my kids were little, if I really wanted them to pay attention to what I was saying so that I knew they were listening to my words, I would take their little face <laughs> in my hand and I'd make sure there was eye contact and I would say, okay, today we are doing this. Repeat it back to me so I knew they were listening. And so when God takes a passage like this, when there's a passage that talks about listening before and after, I envision God taking my face into his hands and saying, Annette, are you listening? Because I need you to hear what I'm saying. Mm. And so when I look at that very nature of who God is, he is a loving father. He doesn't want to see me in harm's way. So he gives me his word and he gives me his hands on my face saying, Annette, are you listening? Mm. And I just love that. And I just reminded when, we were, when the worship team was singing this morning, how great is our God. Mm, amen. You're not going to do that to me when you explain spider dogs, are you? <laughs> yes, I am. <laughs> After the service, so those that want to, in person well, want to see that. The good news around. is that Rob put a picture of spider dogs in the chat uh, for <laughs> us on the Church Center app so we can all see. Uh, Mary Ellen really loves the idea of sitting around a campfire with Jesus. That would be mm, amazing to yes. do that. Some things that stood out to, to Dawn uh, this morning were the ideas of the not deep. She really hit on the, the, the types of soil, the not deep, the scorched, the withered and choked out. So for me, when I looked at the nature and the work of God, it kind of goes back to what you just put in, these different types of soils. It, I was really impressed upon by the fact that the farmer that's out there can see where he's scattering seed. Mm -hmm. Now, you all know this, or I assume that you, you do. I think, I think when, our, uh, when our general superintendent was here, he talked about this. The, the types of farming that we do now um, is very intentional in that, you know, we do the rows and we plant and, and you know, all this. Um, but at this time, when, when a farmer would go out to plant seed, they would actually wait till the, till the proper time. There was the, you know, there was a um, season of rain that would happen in Jerusalem. And the first rain would come and it would prepare the soil for the seed. And they would go out with the bag and with their seed and they would throw it, right? Like you can get the picture of the farmer going out with the seed and tossing it. But the farmer is not oblivious to the fact that there's a footpath right here and the, that there's thorns that are growing over here, but he's still throwing seed on all of them. And it really made me think about, because the soil, as we'll see, is really about the condition of our heart. Mm. And how the Father still, despite the condition of our hearts, throws the seed, throws the truth, the gospel, with hope that it'll take root. And there's fertile soil, absolutely, that takes, that the seed lands on and all that, but... But I, I came, you know, this, the phrase, anyone that has ears. And, and what I see in the nature and the work of God is that the message of the kingdom of God is for all. Yes. No matter where they're at, mm -hmm. God is calling them forward into that. And, and so you might think that your heart is stony and hard like a footpath this morning. And yet God still this morning is throwing seed on that, you know, and, and on the fertile soil that's ready to receive it and, and, and all of that. So I really saw that. And, and you talked, to, and which we call, by the way, it, here's my theological term for today, prevenient grace, Ooh, yes. the grace that goes before. We believe yes. that the Holy Spirit is out calling now people back to him. And that's what I see when he throws that seed. So the other thing that I noticed was, and you talked about it, about understanding. And last week, we, had, we identified there's a difference between listening and active listening. Mm -hmm. And what I see here is that those that are willing to actually listen, the, the verse we looked at last week said that, actually listen. Um, he gives a deeper understanding. Mm -hmm. And so when I come to hear from him, why am I there? Am I here just to hear the words and then go off? Or am I actually here to be transformed? Mm -hmm. 
And, and so I see that, that he's the one that will give understanding. And the last thing I see in this is that he is a God that speaks. Mm-hmm. He tells us these stories so that we can learn. And he's still speaking to us today. He gave this message on a boat, you know, a couple thousand years ago. And yet he's still speaking to us right now through this story. So that's some of the things that I see in terms of his nature and of his work. So the next part for us is we look at the message part of the scripture, which is really where we say, Lord, what are you saying to me? As I look at your word today, God, what is the word that you have for me? And one of the beautiful things that I found as as we've done this is that there seems to be a unifying theme that always emerges. He may say it differently in different words to each of us. Of course, we're different people. And yet there is that unifying theme that runs through of his love. And and so we'll see this morning uh, that played out. So Pastor Annette, Mm -hmm. the message What do you sense that the Lord is saying to you specifically in this reading? And we also, you know, we say, is there a word of correction, guidance, wisdom? And we don't really hit on this very often, but I want to draw it out. Do you have a question for God? As you read this, I'll tell you what my question was right now. Lord, what is the soil of my heart? Is it fertile? Is it a rocky path? Is it shallow? Well, like, where am I today with you? Mm -hmm. But anyway... Pastor Annette, what is the Lord saying to you this morning? Um, God actually gave me three words, <laughs> and um, they all start with the same letter, just like uh, the previous You are times. such a pastor. <laughs> um, the first word is relevant, and I, I feel like I need to explain that one a little bit further. Um, culture today, and I hear this quite often, is that the Bible is not relevant today. Anybody else hear that often? I do. I hear it all the time where they'll say scripture is not relevant. There was a report done a number of years ago, 2010, called Hemorrhaging Faith. They wanted to know why are we losing our young adults and our children in the church. And one of the things that came out of it, they determined that there was four spiritual types. There was the wanderer, the fence sitter, the engagers, and the rejectors. And when you look at those four spiritual types, they fall into the four types of soils. Mm. So when you look at scripture that was 2,000 years ago when this was written, and today, this new report, don't tell me that scripture isn't relevant. It is relevant. It might be different words. They're talking about soils. Now we're talking about our spiritual um, journeys that we're on. They're the same thing, people. It's as relevant then as it is now. So that was the one thing where God really spoke to me on was about being relevant. The other one, and you're going to love this one, is the word reckless. (laughs) Doesn't that start with a W? Mm, Nope, not in my life. (laughs) Not in my life. I want to, you hear the R, not the W. So talking about where Dr. Busick um, was here at District Assembly, he talked about this passage and he painted the picture of the reckless farmer, Mm. right? Um, I don't know if you were here to listen to that. Um, but it was amazing when he talked about the reckless farmer, and it was just the picture you painted of the scattering of the seeds. If we look at what the seeds were then, seeds were a valuable commodity. It meant food for their family, and it also meant um, a a means of... um, income as well too because they would have sold the produce from that from their farms so it was valuable resource for them and to be a reckless farmer to just scatter the seeds recklessly or it appears recklessly would have been very counter cultural um if you look at it today if you see somebody doing something that appears to be reckless um we often, I don't even know what I'm trying to say here. I got totally off my notes here. In this parable, the farmer scattered his seed across the field. He would have known that there was a trampled path. He would have seen it. From experience as a farmer, he would have known that not to throw seed where there was uh, weeds or maybe even rocks below. He would have known that, but he did it anyway. He didn't shy away from scattering those seeds. There are things that we can't see, like rocks and weeds under the surface. 
but we are to scatter those seeds anyway. We are to share hmm. the word of God, no matter what we can see, and not just on futile, fut I can't even say that word this morning, fertile, not just on fertile soil. No matter where we are, who we're talking to, we are to share the word of God. Culture says that would be reckless. I say that's being responsible. Another word for reckless would be the upside down kingdom. Hmm. That is not what we're. That is not what we're called to do. We are called to be the un, upside down kingdom. We are called to be reckless. The third one, the third word that does start with the letter R, by the way, is the word receive. And I look at this passage almost like a double side of the coin. You know, in one word we're being reckless, and it's about us sharing the word of God. But what are we ready to receive? Where is our heart? And you already touched on this a little bit as well too. And I do ask myself. Is my heart hardened like mm. the soil on the trampled path? Mm -hmm. Is my, my relationship with God being strangled? Or what are the weeds in my life? Is my journey or my transformation with God deeply rooted? Or are my roots shallow? I need to search myself. And any of these situations are true that I need to make endeavors to make sure that my soil is fertile. Ready to receive the love of God so that... I can be transformed and so that there is fruit. But endeavors that I'm talking about are not just the tilling of the soil or watering of the soil. Endeavors include accountability. So sometimes I have tunnel vision, kind of like, and I, you've used this before where there's like a horse with the blinders on. And sometimes I can be like that. And I need to depend on others to come alongside of me and speak truth in love mm -hmm. in my life. So those are what God was saying to me through this passage. Uh, I said before we get into this that you find a, a unifying theme, and it was like you were reading my notes, which, was, which is great. Um, and I said it already, but what, what really stood out to me, Pastor Annette, was I noted that the farmer didn't just spread seed on the fertile soil, but that he spread it all over. It sounds familiar. Hmm. And for me, this means that the seed, the good news, the message of the kingdom... Uh, that's come now as it is in heaven is meant to be shared with not just those that it's easy to, to share with. And are you typing everything I'm saying right now? Absolutely. Amazing. Don't type that part. I'm dictating it. No, no, no. That, that this message, and you just said it, is it's meant to be shared with everyone, not just mm -hmm. the ones that it's easy to share it with. So let me just be blunt. This morning with you all in this room, it's really easy to share these things. We're all of one mind, of one heart. We all have come to hear the word for the most part. And, and so it's easy to share in this context, but it's totally different to share when the spirit prompts you and you're standing at Superstore or Sobeys and there's somebody in the aisle and for whatever reason the spirit puts his finger on your thumb and goes, hey, I just want you to go over to that person. And, and that is spreading seed, but it's uncomfortable. What will they think of me? What might happen? What, what, what would they say? Mm -hmm. And so then this was where he, he challenged me. He said to me, Bradley, because he calls me Bradley, <laughs> how it's received is not up to you. Whoa, that's not my job, Lord. But my job as someone who has received this message, I've, re I've received, the seeds have been planted in me and are growing in me. And I don't mean that pridefully or arrogantly, but the point of the seed growing in us is that it produces fruit. Yes. And that we multiply. Yes. So God didn't just save me and plant that seed in me so that I could have the nice, warm, fuzzy feeling, grow in spiritual understanding and hold it all into myself to go, wow, I understand the deep mysteries of God. Awesome for me. But he planted that seed in me and in each one of us so that we would grow, yes, understand the deeper things of the Spirit, but produce fruit that brings others in so that we could go and plant seeds on others. But we're not responsible for how that's received. Well, it says right in verse 8, um, they produce a crop that was 30, 60, and even 100 times as much as mm -hmm. been planted. Yeah. That's what we're to do. And I do have to say this. That doesn't mean that I can't be a part or others can't be a part of preparing the soil. Absolutely. Right? I, I think 
that, that's discipleship, what we would call discipleship. That's coming alongside each other and working the soil of our hearts together. And we do that this morning. As we, you know, maybe you've come in this morning with, with a footpath for a heart. It's stony and it's hard. But together we can work on that together so that it becomes fertile soil. That's okay. And we can be a part of that. But how the message is received isn't up to me. And that's frankly kind of freeing. Because one of our biggest fears is when we share something, then we get transparent and vulnerable. It's what if that message is rejected? Mm. And what if we sever a relationship or strain a relationship because we felt impressed to share? But that's not up to me. And I have to trust the Lord that if it is a strain on the relationship, that he will bring it back together. Um, and so for me, that was really where that message uh, was was that I'm to spread seed wherever, to spread the, the, the good news of Jesus Christ and the kingdom on earth now as it is in heaven. And to me, that's a, there's a big difference about preaching about and, and trying to invite people to just hold on till we all go to heaven. Hmm. That's boring. <laughs> Sorry, hold on till we get to heaven? No thanks. I would like to experience heaven on earth now. And that's yes. what Jesus brought. That's what the resurrection was all about. And so when we spread the seeds of the kingdom, that's what we're spreading. That transformation can happen now for you. Not in some blissful thing later, now. And, and so I need to get it. I'm getting into my obedience part, so I better zip it. And, and that's really where he led me, though. That was the message. Spread the seed wherever. Don't worry about the outcome. I've got that. And be a part of tilling the soil. I should have just said it like that and moved on. Sam, with your permission, with a little bit of a head nod, can I share what you shared with me this morning? So just to what we're talking about, Sam comes up to me this morning and shares just an amazing story. He does um, Bible study in the, in the home and where, the place which he lives, and every Monday he does a Bible study to a number of seniors. And he had the privilege, the honor and the privilege. So when he's doing his Bible study, he's scattering seeds. So he had the honor and the privilege last night to leading um, someone in his, where he lives, to the Lord last night. Amen. Woo! Yes, sir. That is you, living Jesus. here on earth and celebrating and scattering the seed and celebrating together. That's exactly what we're talking about. Sam mod modeled that for us this, today. Amen. Yes. <laughs> Thank you, Sam, for sharing Thank you, that, Sam. by the way. Wow. So, the beautiful thing about this, Pastor Annette, and why I love the tool that we use is that, okay, the Lord is speaking to me, that's great, but now is our opportunity to respond, and this is where we're going to really see the types of soil that we are. Mm. And, okay, the word has been spread, the seed has been spread, and now the Lord invites us to take a step forward towards him in obedience. And so... The question before us is, is what's just one, just one step of obedience? You don't have to have the grand plan of how it's all going to wind up. What's one step of obedience today that we can take? Um, I have two. <laughs> it's, 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 the it's, instructions it's, are so simple. It's on the screen. But it's, I, it's I, like a coin. There's two sides to it. It's one step of obedience, but two different sides. Well, then would you just... All right. Um, my step of obedience includes being intentionally sharing the word of God, scattering that seed in all areas, all places, no matter where I am, what I'm doing, to be intentional, to pray for those opportunities to God, for God to open it up and to, to intentionally share the word of God. The other side is to keep my heart fertile. Mm-hmm. And to make sure, because there are seasons of life, and the farmer has to scatter the seed every year. There are seasons in my life where I felt like my heart was my heart was hard, or I was in the weeds, or I was in the thorns, whatever it is. And I need to keep my heart fertile. Mm. And that's where my step of obedience is, to be intentionally scattering the seeds and intentionally working on my relationship with God so that I continually be transformed. Thank you for sharing that. I'm glad that you had two. <laughs> Mine is very similar to yours, and it might, this might sound too simple. When I asked the Lord for the step of obedience, it was very simple. 
um, but also potentially difficult. And I think you'll all get what I mean by this when I share. To prayerfully pick, at first I wrote to pick one person, and then I thought, well, hold on. I, Lord, you need to tell me who. So to prayerfully pick one person in my sphere, sphere of influence. If you don't know what that is, I'm sure you do. It's we all have a sphere of influence, which is people around us that we have contact with, that, that we are able to reach out to. And you are all within mine, and I'm all within your sphere of influence, that we can have dialogue and conversation and, and all this together. Um, but my sphere of influence really, like, it really got me thinking, who's in mine? Who do I have opportunity with? And, and so it was to pray for one person um, and for the Lord to create an opportunity or t- to just, uh, I want to be careful how I word this. Oftentimes, I find myself over-spiritualizing when the Lord just says, just go do it. When I'm like, well, Lord, you need to identify. You need to create the opportunity. When I have a car and means to just go see a friend that I haven't seen in a while. I don't know that I need to wait for some grand revelation to get in my vehicle and and just go be with someone to spread seed. At the same time, I also don't want it to be not spirit-led. I don't Mm. want to just try to force my will and that, that will be useless. So let me just read this because it sounds, I'm trailing off here. To prayerfully pick one person in my sphere of influence and to create an opportunity to share what has been planted in me. That's it. What's been planted in me. Not what I hope it will be for you. This is what the Lord's done in my heart. This is, I used to be this. And the person that's in my mind would know me from a totally different life. Mm-hmm. This was who I used to be. This is who you remember me as. Here's who I am. Um, I have a funny story of, of something like that, but I'm not going to share it now. If you want to hear it, talk to me later. <laughs> uh, it has to do with Bon Jovi. So that's, that's your teaser. He can share that when we're talking about spider dogs. Sure. You know, the farmer knew when the time was right to intentionally go out and spread the seed, and I need to trust the Holy Spirit in leading me and knowing when the time is right to go out and to share the words or to know when not to share. Maybe the beginning of planting a seed is just to go and be a friend to someone I haven't seen in a long time with no agenda of, can we sit down and talk? I want to share this. Maybe it's just going and and hanging out for a little bit. Just, hey, let's get lunch together. And then going from there. Um, I also think that spreading seed doesn't just have to be us vocally saying something, but by the way that we live. Yes, absolutely. Right? So the transformed heart Mm -hmm. is that. So that's, that was really my step of obedience, was to prayerfully pick one person and, and then just be present and let the Holy Spirit lead me. So, Sam, I wish you would.
came for me. And so I said, okay. I said, I'll pray and you can repeat after me. And he did. And, and, and he made a statement after me. He said, I feel a difference. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so I'm just asking the Holy Spirit to do his work now uh, and giving him the assurance that he is saved and to direct him in the word so that he'll be encouraged and that he'll be fed and that God will give me the opportunity and the willingness to share his word with him also and nurture him and mentor him. Yes. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Sam, for sharing that. Amen. What a testimony. Mm -hmm. When the Holy Spirit prompts us, let's be obedient to him. Amazing. That man's eternity has been changed. Praise the Lord. Amen. Thank you, Sam. Yes, sir. Amen. Yes, sir. <clears throat> Pastor Annette. Pastor Brad. The Lord invites us to be transformed. Mm -hmm. And I, uh, I recently heard someone pray, and it was a very earnest prayer. It was a prayer of repentance. Mm. that attitudes and different things, they just needed to, they needed to repent because they wanted to be transformed and have that forgiven and take a step forward. And this morning, the Lord invites each one of us to that place of transformation where he may identify something in our life and not with a condescending tone. No. I can't stress that enough because of how many people think that the Lord is this big bully in the sky that the moment we mess up, he's waiting to, to say, us. hey, smarten up. Mm -hmm. And yet my experience, and I think the experience of others has been, he talks to us in love. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he may point out what's going on and go, we need to fix this, but it's never in this condescending tone of you're not enough, you're a failure and all that kind of stuff. That, that's not him. So this morning, the Lord invites us to look within and ask him to reveal anything that may be holding us back from being transformed more into him. Because sin in our life is going to keep us from sowing the seed. And I don't want to be that. I don't want to be held back. I'm my own worst enemy. I can, uh, you know, so we, we need to live a life of repentance and transformation. And so what's the Lord saying to you in this area? I'm going to be completely vulnerable right now. Um, I'm going to hold it together. <clears throat> so if, quite a few months ago now, I made the decision to seek um, some help. I started noticing some patterns and behaviors in my life that I was not um, happy with, and I knew it's not what God would want for me as well. So I did seek some help. And um, this comes down to my heart being hardened. Mm. Um, I was not allowing myself to feel um, and to be present in situations that required a deep emotional connection or an attachment. And I was like, why am, why am I doing this? What is this all about? So I did seek some help. And you and I have had a conversation just about this very thing. And I never want to be that old person of where my heart was hard mm. and that I did not allow myself to feel um, what I was feeling because my feelings or what I'm experiencing is real and it's okay. And to make those through that, um, through that journey to make my relationships whole again. And because when I make my relationships whole again, then it makes my relationship with God whole again. And that's where my repentance comes from, is that I never want to be back into that place of a hardened heart. And I was there, and I'm through that, and I continue to um, um, work on tilling my soils so that there's fruit. Amen. I find myself in a similar place where I've 
It's, easy, it's so easy. Uh, no, for me, it can be so easy to become cynical and critical and, and roll it off as sarcasm to try to be funny. And yet, what's happening on the inside is the soil of my heart is drying up, to continue to use the analogy. And, and all of a sudden, I've got a hardness to the message that I never had before. Mm -hmm. And so I found myself asking the Lord to reveal to me the cracks and the dry places that need, to, I'm going to sound very churchy, that he would pour living water over. Mm -hmm. That he would bring refresh, refreshing, refreshment to my soul and that he would take out my heart of stone. Um, you know, if something sits for so long um, in the ground, it can become petrified. All the minerals and everything, or all the all that it was, goes, and it's what's left is the stone. And it's, it's easy for my heart to go to that place where I I leave things festering. Mm -hmm. Maybe a, maybe a critical spirit that I had that I didn't repent of, that I didn't go to the person and apologize for for just even just thinking what I thought in the moment, and and letting that sit there can fester, and all of a sudden it can get hard, and if left there, it can become stone. And then I have, to, and then you don't even think about it. You just immediately go to that critical place. So I had to confess that. And then what happens for me is then, as that happens, I'm not producing fruit. Mm -hmm. I'm, I've become useless to the kingdom. And even just, yeah. So I asked the Lord to forgive me for my critical, hard heart. Mm -hmm. And I know that I'm not alone in that. Definitely not. Which gives me some comfort, because we're on this journey together. Mm -hmm. um, and he is faithful and true. And he said that he would take out the heart of stone and put in a heart of flesh. My real prayer in my repentance was that like, I really want to see people with God's eyes. That even if they do something that I, that I would think is nuts or crazy or whatever, that I wouldn't just go to that, well, that's different and I don't like it. But that I would remain open and have his heart and, and his eyes for people. And like you, my last words were, please help the soil of my heart to remain fertile. Mm -hmm. I desperately want that, Did to it. be open I know many of you have commented in chat and Mary Ellen is saying, I caused, I love this, from Isaiah 43, verse 20, and then I'll uh, invite the worship team to come and Pastor Annette's going to close us with prayer. Mary Ellen says, I caused streams to flow in the dry and empty land for my chosen ones. There's a promise we can take to the bank right there. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to invite the worship team to uh, join me. And Pastor Annette, would you lead us forward in these moments? Absolutely. Let's pray this morning. Heavenly Father, we just uh, come before you and give you thanks. Give you thanks for your word and for this picture of scattering the seeds no matter where they land, Father God, that you are in control of all. And so, Father, I thank you for this opportunity to get into your word this morning. Father, I just want to pray for um, anyone here in person or anyone online this morning that maybe you're experiencing a hardened heart or are not deeply rooted Whatever their situation, Father God, I just pray that you will come around them and draw close to them, Father God. Help them to continue on their journey towards transformation as well, too, Father. I pray for our time um, remaining. Let, us, let everything we do and say be honoring and glorifying to you, Father God. Father, I just thank you for who you are and how good you are to each one of us in our lives. Just be with us and encourage us. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. You're welcome to stand or sit as we continue to worship. The splendor of the King Clothed in majesty 
All the earth rejoice, all the earth rejoice. He wraps himself in light, and darkness tries to hide, and trembles at his voice, trembles at his voice. How great is our God, sing with me, how great is our God, and all will see how great, how great is our God, age to age, and age to age. He stands and time is in his hands beginning and the end beginning and the end the God in three in one Father Spirit Son the Lion and the Lamb great is our God and how great is our God sing with me how great is our God all will see how great how great is our God is the name above all names he's the time how great is our God and how great is our God with me how great is our God and all will see how great how great is our God would you pray and with me as we close with our benediction. Really get this picture in your mind. I pray that from his glorious unlimited resources, he will empower you with inner strength through his spirit. Then Christ will make his home in your hearts as you trust in him. Your roots will go grow down in God's love and keep you strong. And may you have the power to understand, as all God's people should, how wide, how long, how high, and how deep his love is. May you experience the love of Christ. Though it's too great to understand fully, then you will be made complete with all the fullness of life 
and power that comes from God. Now, all glory to God, who is able through his mighty power at work within us to accomplish infinitely more than we might ask or think. Glory to him in the church and in Christ Jesus through all generations, forever and ever, and all God's people said, amen. amen. God bless you. Have a blessed day, and we look forward to seeing you again next week. Thank you.